Hello everyone. So today we will be studying the very basics of the entire dentistry which is the basic structure of a tooth. So I will be discussing what are the different layers of a tooth and some key and important points about those layers that are not only important for your basic concepts but also very important for your exams and your viva. So make sure to watch the video till the end in order to understand those important points. So before starting about what the individual tooth is made up of, I want to make some terminologies clear. So a tooth has two parts. First is the crown and the other one is the root. So the crown is usually that portion of the tooth that is visible in our oral cavity or our mouth. While the root is the portion that is embedded within our gums. Well this may not always be the case as in situations where there is gingival recession the root might also be visible in the mouth. But the general idea is that the root is embedded within the gums while the crown is the visible portion of the tooth. So moving on inside the tooth, the tooth is made up of three different layers. So let's start first with the outermost layer. The outermost layer of the tooth is known as the enamel. So enamel basically covers the crown of the tooth and is the most external layer of the tooth and hence forms the protective coating of the tooth. So the enamel is what we see when we look at someone's teeth. So enamel is not white like the contrary belief, it is actually translucent in nature. It is not transparent but it is translucent. Translucent basically means that it allows some of the light to pass through, not all of it, while a transparent object will allow the entire light to pass through it. A clear piece of glass is transparent as it will allow the entire light to pass through it, just like the windows of a car, those are actually transparent as we can clearly see through them. But the enamel is translucent and does not allow us to completely see through it but it does allow the internal color of the tooth to reflect through. You will understand more about it when we will study the next layers. So continuing on enamel is also inert and non-vital. So it is actually a dead tissue and it is also insensitive meaning it does not have any nerves or vessels or pain receptors hence it cannot sense pain or anything else. The pain that we feel in our teeth is actually due to some other reason which I will explain later onwards but it is not because of the enamel. So moving on the cells that are responsible for forming enamel are known as the ameloblast and once the enamel is formed it is also non-regenerable and non-repairable. Meaning if once it is destroyed by any means like from a carious attack or during cavity preparation it can never be replaced. You may be thinking that because of these features enamel is vulnerable, well actually it is not. Because destroying the enamel is not that easy as enamel is one of the highly mineralized tissue in our body. It contains up to 96% of inorganic material making it even harder than our bones. The rest 4% is some organic material and water content. Not only it is highly mineralized but the minerals of enamel have a very high degree of complex organization. So these structural features allow the enamel to withstand very high degrees of masticatory loads and assaults from the acids of food and bacteria and thus the enamel is able to protect the tooth. Although like I have said enamel may be a dead tissue because it is inert and non-vital, it still does allow some ion exchange between the environment and the internal of the tooth. But the enamel no matter how strong it is, it is brittle in nature. The brittleness of the enamel comes from the high degree of mineral content that occurs inside the enamel. And since it is brittle, it needs some kind of support in order to withstand the forces without fracture. So the enamel gets this support from the next layer of the tooth which is known as the dentine. So the dentine forms the mask or the bulk of the tooth and it also supports the enamel to compensate for its brittleness. So the natural color of dentine is actually yellowish in color. So the color of the tooth that we see is actually the color of the dentine being reflected through the enamel. So this is a very important point as it is often asked in exams that where does the yellowish tint of the tooth come from. So that color of the tooth is actually the color of dentine being reflected through the translucent enamel. So some people have thinner enamel layers hence their teeth appear a bit more yellow while others have thick enamel layers and less yellowish dentine and hence their teeth appear more white. As the enamel wears down more and more due to any reason whether it be a carious attack or whether it be due to aging, the internal color of the dentine becomes more and more prominent and hence the teeth start to appear more yellowish with the eventual breakdown of enamel. 
Most actors or celebrities actually undergo certain treatments so their teeth can appear white but the natural color of our teeth is actually yellowish tint in nature. So I think this is enough for the color let's move on. So the dentine unlike enamel is actually a vital tissue and it is also sensitive in nature meaning it can sense pain and sensitivity that reaches it. But just like enamel, dentine is also a vascular in nature meaning it does not have a blood supply and is devoid of it. Not only that, dentine is also repairable meaning it can undergo repair unlike enamel which was non-repairable because it is completely dead tissue while dentine can undergo repair. This special ability of dentine is because of the cells that form it. The cells that form dentine are known as the odontoblast. These cells are actually lined just at the periphery of the dentine at the border of our next layer and hence the presence of these cells makes a huge difference. These cells can be stimulated to grow new dentine whenever the situation demands it. So this key difference between the enamel and the dentine is what gives the dentine the ability to repair itself. So the structure of dentine is made up of 70% inorganic substances, 20% organic and 10% water. So it is not as hard as the enamel but it is still quite tough. Just remember that I am only discussing the very basics and the key points of these structures. I will be discussing in detail about them individually but now let's just keep focused on the very basics. Now the next, the innermost layer of the tooth is known as the pulp. So the pulp is the innermost layer of the tooth. It is not a hard tissue like the enamel and the dentine. It is actually a soft connective tissue which fills the inside of the tooth. So the pulp is where all the blood vessels, the nerves, the cells of the tooth lie and the pulp is the reason why we feel pain or pressure in our teeth. And the odontoblast like I've already said can repair the dentine whenever the situation demands are also located within the periphery of this pulp. So the pulp has a lot of formative cells within it. And it is also a highly vascular structure unlike enamel and dentine which were completely avascular. The dentine and the pulp may be very distinct tissue but they are actually very much interrelated. Especially the embryological origin of both of these, the dentine and the pulp is very much interrelated and hence they should be considered together. This unity between the two layers, the dentine and the pulp gives the pulp its four important function. Number one formative because it can produce dentine with the help of the odontoblasts that lie within the enamel. Number two nutritive because it provides nourishment to the avascular dentine. Number three protective because it provides protection to the dentine and the tooth by giving it sensitivity. And finally reparative because it can undergo dentinal repair whenever the situation demands. So these four functions of the pulp are very important and often asked in viva or in our exams and hence you should remember these four important functions. So these three tissues, the enamel, the dentine and the pulp form the majority of the tooth. Out of these three layers, the enamel and the dentine are considered under the term known as the tooth proper because both of them are the hard tissues while the pulp is actually a soft connective tissue which plays a more role in containing cells and nerves for the tooth. So therefore only the enamel and dentine are considered under the term tooth proper which is also again a very important viva question and also a commonly asked question in exams. Therefore you should know that the term tooth proper contains only two structures that are dentine and enamel not the pulp. So these were the three important layers of the crown. Talking about the root the dentine and the pulp are the same as the crown but there is an important difference in the outermost layer. In the root the outermost layer which is the enamel is replaced by a mineralized tissue which is known as the cementum. So the tooth is three layered throughout whether it be the crown or the root but in the root the outermost layer is the cementum while in the crown it is the enamel. So the cementum is also a mineralized connected tissue containing approximately 45 to 50 percent of mineral content. So it is not as hard as the enamel or the dentine and that makes sense since it does not have to face the masticated loads and acid or salts like the enamel has to. 
So the cementum is very much similar to the bone. Perhaps out of all the structures of the tooth, cementum resembles the bone the most. Cementum resembles bone the most out of all of the four layers, except that cementum, just like enamel and dentine, is also a vascular in nature, while the bone is actually a vascular tissue. So cementum may resemble the bone, but it is actually a vascular, just like enamel and dentine, while the bone is a vascular tissue. So out of all of the four tissues, only pulp contains vessels, while cementum, enamel, and dentine are a vascular in nature. Nature and don't contain any kind of vessel. So the cells that form the cementum are known as the cementoblast. So from the inside, the cementum continues with the dentine, just like the enamel. On the top, it joins with the enamel. This joint between the two, the enamel and the cementum, is known as the cervical line. So from the inside, it is attached to the dentine. From the top, it is attached to the enamel. But from the outside, cementum has a very crucial role of providing attachment to the tooth. It does this by attaching to the periodontal ligaments on the outside of the tooth. So the periodontal ligaments are not as per se the part of the tooth because they are attached onto the tooth, but the cementum and the periodontal ligaments are interrelated to one another. I will discuss in detail about them later on in my other video because that is a different topic altogether but for now understanding the basics is important. So I think I will end my lecture over here. Just a small summary. The tooth has three layers. In the crown, the outermost layer is a hard translucent layer which is known as the enamel. It is non-vital, non-regeneratable, avascular, very hard layer and therefore brittle in nature. So the next yellowish layer is the dentine which forms the bulk of the tooth and is hard but not as hard as the enamel. While the innermost soft layer is the pulp, which forms the core of the tooth and contains cells, nerves and vessels within it and it also provides the vitality to the tooth. While in the root, the outermost layer is replaced by cementum which resembles the bone but it is also avascular just like enamel and dentine. If you want to read more on the basic structure of tooth, you can read my blog on my website. I will link it up on the top right corner. So if you found this video helpful, then don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more educational content like this one. I will meet you people in my next video. Till then, take care of yourselves and your loved ones. Stay safe and goodbye.